We have all heard by this point that a global semiconductor shortage has existed since the global pandemic of 2020, has stunted the tech industry's growth, and has the potential to cripple governments and businesses alike. Surprisingly, there was only one company in the world, ASML, that designs and creates the machines responsible for producing these vital chips. If semiconductor chips are so important, why then are we relying on a lone corporation to produce them? And why can no other company do what ASML is doing? Let's explore why every person in the world currently depends on a little-known chip manufacturer, ASML. Advanced Semiconductor Materials Lithography, or ASML, a Dutch company that specializes in semiconductor equipment, uses the slogan, the most important tech company you've never heard of, as its marketing tagline. A statement like this is almost always considered to be hyperbolic when it comes to public relations. Regarding ASML, however, it is more likely to be true than not. Recently, there's been massive attention to this company because the technology they own is genuinely world-changing. The entire world's technological advancements rely mainly on their work. ASML is the only company in the world, currently, that manufactures extreme ultraviolet light, or EUV, machines, which are the most advanced type of lithography equipment and are necessary for the production of every advanced processor chip that is used throughout the world today. These machines generate large amounts of this light in order to print intricate designs on microchips that are very small. The EUV light is generated by extremely small explosions of molten tin that occur at extremely high speeds. The light is then reflected off of proprietary Zeiss mirrors, which ASML claims have the flattest surface in the world. A very small fraction of the EUV light particles actually makes it to the surface of a silicon wafer, where they print the extremely minute designs that decide what each chip will be used for. The technology is extremely complex and produces light wavelengths of just 13 and a half nanometers. The reduction in size is almost 15 times when compared to deep ultraviolet DUV lithography, which uses roughly 190 nanometers of light. The worldwide shortage of chips has caused a surge in demand for ASML's EUV technology, which has led to the accumulation of back orders for a wide variety of goods. The cutting-edge chips produced from these EUV machines are not only necessary for the production of a wide variety of products, including laptops, mobile phones, weapons, and medical equipment, but they also serve as the basis for a number of developing technologies, such as artificial intelligence, robotics, and the Internet of Things. Furthermore, the demand for advanced chips is increasing at an exponential rate. The results of ASML's second quarter in 2022 showed the highest quarterly level of orders in the company's history, with new orders rising to $8.39 billion, or 8.46 billion euros, from $2.76 billion during the same quarter in 2019. Even though ASML's monopoly on the global market is not widely acknowledged, the truth will eventually make its way into the financial markets. At the height of the global semiconductor supply chain squeeze in September 2021, the share price of ASML skyrocketed from $158 per share in December 2018 to $849 per share in September 2021. To put this in perspective, Amazon's stock price was approximately $176 per share during the same period. And mind you, that during COVID, Amazon was one of the companies that made the heftiest of profits. Still, Amazon had to kneel before ASML when it came to stock price. As of January 2023, the share price of ASML has decreased to approximately $621, which is reflective of more general market conditions. Nonetheless, ASML is still one of the most valuable stocks. One of the analysts at Global Data, Michael Orm, refers to ASML as the Atlas Company of the semiconductor industry, and possibly even the entire world. That is to say, it's the company that's bearing the heaviest burden for the supply chain of the entire semiconductor industry. According to Orm, the only way for the world's three largest chip makers, TSMC of Taiwan, Intel of the United States, and Samsung of South Korea, to print cutting-edge chips at the moment is with the EUV lithography machines manufactured by ASML. 
These cutting edge chips are the most advanced 5 nanometer and 3 nanometer chips. The fact that ASML has a monopoly on the production of EUV machines, as well as the fact that the use of these lithography machines is the step in the production of advanced chips that incur the highest cost, put the company in a position that is completely distinct from any other. An important question to ask is just how did ASML become the dominant player in semiconductor chips in the global market? Well, long story short, ASML's ascent to market dominance and historical ability to outrun its primary competitors, Nikon and Canon, has been enabled in large part by the company's participation in research and development, as well as collaboration with industry peers. Established in 1984 as a partnership between two Dutch companies, Advanced Semiconductor Materials International and Philips, the company launched its first machine for semiconductor lithography out of a leaky shed next to a Philips office building in Eindhoven. The machine had been invented in a United States military lab in the 1950s and looked like a projector. There was a reticle that stored the image that you want to project. The image was then going to be projected onto the wafer using an optical system. Fast forward some years, ASML continued its expansion through collaboration with companies all along the supply chain, most notably the largest chip makers in the world. According to Orm, the development of EUV machines took more than 15 years and significant financial support from semiconductor manufacturers Intel, TSMC, and Samsung. The machines that ASML makes cost a total of $140 million and consist of more than 100,000 individual components sourced from approximately 5,000 different suppliers located all over the world. ASML is the only company that has been successful in integrating all of these components into a system that is, in its entirety, operational. But, according to ASML's CEO Peter Wenink, the machine's price does not matter in regard to its work. Wenink says that the company has been bringing down semiconductor prices since it was founded 38 years ago and will keep doing so for the next couple of decades. The world needs more chips, and so we need to make more machines. However, they will keep growing in average selling price. Wenink also said the global chip shortage is a catch-22 for ASML. According to Ai Dong Shu, head of the semiconductor capability at management consultancy Cambridge Consultants, who believes the cost of EUV machines is not the most limiting factor when it comes to semiconductor innovation. Collaboration is not always present when it comes to leading-edge intellectual property. ASML has a capital valuation of $230 billion and is affiliated with the big boys of semiconductor manufacturing. This indicates that intellectual property, and not funding, is where the real keys to the industry lie. According to Xu, only the most cutting-edge intellectual property is typically guarded with such a high level of vigilance. So, once the IP has been around for two or three years, collaboration is much more likely to occur. Because high-value intellectual property shifts the engine of innovation away from funding and toward talent, the global skills base has become one of the real battlegrounds for competition in the area of extreme ultraviolet machines. In this regard, Xu credits ASML's long-standing ties with Europe's Inter-University Microelectronic Center, or IMEC, as the kind of collaboration that has fostered EUV expertise in Europe. IMEC is an organization that brings together researchers from different universities. Both IMEC and ASML were established in the same year, 1984, in Belgium. Today, IMEC is widely regarded as Europe's premier research facility for semiconductors. According to Xu, both Europe and the United States have an advantage over China when it comes to the development of cutting-edge skills and semiconductor technology. Although China is successful in attracting talent in all areas of technology, the country has not been as successful in attracting talent in cutting-edge fields, such as semiconductors. China is interesting because it may be the second or third country in the world for manufacturing semiconductors, but it's not in leading-edge semiconductor technology, or at least not yet. Going forward, Xu believes that ASML will eventually have to allow opportunities for other players in order to secure the global supply chain. This hasn't happened yet, but it will happen. After all, it's not healthy to have a solo supply. 
Veldhoven, which is located in the Brainport Eindhoven region of Brabant in the Netherlands, is the location of ASML's headquarters. Brainport Eindhoven is recognized as one of the most important technology hubs in Europe. Approximately 32,000 people from 120 different countries make up the company's workforce, which is spread out across 60 locations worldwide. The complexity of building EUV machines means that the company relies on a network of more than 4,600 Tier 1 suppliers and has offices in Belgium, France, Germany, Hong Kong, Ireland, Israel, Italy, Japan, mainland China, Malaysia, the Netherlands, Singapore, South Korea, Taiwan, the UK, and the US. ASML has 16 primary R&D centers across the US, Europe, and Asia. The largest R&D and manufacturing center is located at the company's headquarters in Veldhoven. The company also has a research and development and manufacturing location in Berlin, Europe. In comparison to its five significant locations in the United States, ASML has nine significant locations in Asia. The company has four operational centers in China, three in Taiwan, and one in Japan and South Korea. Shenzhen, in China, is the company's most important research and development center in Asia for computer software, and Lingku, in Taiwan, serves as the company's most important location overall in Asia. Hong Kong serves as the company's regional headquarters. Wilton, Connecticut, is the location of the company's second largest research and development center on a global scale and its largest site in the United States. In addition to locations in Chandler, Arizona and Hillsboro, Oregon, which both serve as global customer support center locations, the company has a center in Silicon Valley that focuses on software and R&D, a facility in San Diego that specializes in the development of deep ultraviolet DUV, and extreme ultraviolet EUV machines. The FDI company database at Investment Monitor has registered three projects involving foreign direct investment or FDI that were carried out by ASML in 2022. These projects were evenly distributed across regions with two workforce expansion projects in China and South Korea, as well as a manufacturing facility expansion project in Wilton, Connecticut, which will cost $250 million and is expected to create 1,000 jobs over the course of the next two years. Taiwan was the primary location for all of ASML's foreign direct investment projects from October 2019 through July 2021. At the most difficult point in the semiconductor supply chain squeeze that occurred in 2021, it became abundantly clear that the chip industry as a whole needed to diversify geographically in order to prevent further issues. ASML's foreign direct investment projects became more geographically diverse beginning in July 2021, with the addition of three projects in the United States, two in South Korea, and one in China. These projects included the announcement of a new research and development center in San Jose in August 2021, as well as a new manufacturing plant in South Korea in May 2021. Greenfield investments in research and development and manufacturing of semiconductors are the kind of investment that promotion agencies all over the world can only dream of having because of the high-value, high-tech jobs and the economic development that it brings to a region. According to the chief economist at Investment Monitor, Glenn Barker, Semiconductor chips are such an important component across all industries that companies are looking to have a more regional presence than they did in the past in order to service the ever-increasing demand for these chips. He continued by saying that ASML's geographic diversification is proof of this. Barkley notes that even though the implementation of new projects requires a lot of time and results in high costs, the return on investment is likely to be even higher. According to him, there are also a relatively low number of players active in this industry, which leads to the ability to barter for large incentives from various governments. However, the grim news here is that the ongoing trade conflict between China and the United States has stunted ASML's progress. Depending on one's point of view, government intervention in the industry can either be beneficial or detrimental to its progress. ASML, despite being a European company, has not been able to avoid being caught in the crossfire of the ongoing tech wars between the United States and China. According to Orm, the United States has weaponized ASML's intellectual property in order to combat the threat posed by Chinese technology. 
This is because ASML's technology incorporates USIP. Late in the month of August 2022, the United States Department of Commerce made an announcement that placed export restrictions on electronic design automation software used in the manufacturing of cutting-edge chips that could not be shipped to China. As part of the United States government's increased focus on enforcing export restrictions that specifically target China, the Department of Commerce added seven entities to the entity list maintained by the Bureau of Industry and Security. ASML is now unable to supply Chinese companies on the entity list maintained by the United States Department of Commerce, says Orm. These companies include China's largest foundry, SMIC, and of course, Huawei. It's impossible that the company will continue to supply SMIC and other Chinese companies with its older generation DUV machines. However, these machines are not used in the production of advanced chips and are only used in the production of 14NM chips and above. Orm does not rule out the possibility that the United States government could also prohibit the sale of DUV machines to China by including these companies on its entity list of Chinese businesses. Orm adds that in order to take preventative action, SMIC has just recently purchased 47 DUV machines. Due to the fact that approximately 20% of ASML's revenue comes from its sales in China, this may prove to be a significant obstacle for the company. In addition, there is widespread agreement within the industry that China will dominate the global market for semiconductors by a significant margin by the year 2030. According to a report by Global Data Thematic Data, China is on track to become the leading semiconductor superpower in the world because of the country's increasing demand for chips on the domestic market. According to the Semiconductor Industry Association and the Boston Consulting Group, the size of the semiconductor industry will more than double to more than $1 trillion by the year 2030, and China will be responsible for approximately 60% of that growth. According to Orm, senior management at ASML is frustrated because the Dutch government is complying with directives issued by the United States government, despite the fact that ASML is a Dutch company. This places Washington's hard hats on a direct path toward a head-on collision with a global semiconductor industry that is dependent on sales of Chinese semiconductors by more than 30% on average for chip makers in the United States and Europe. There will be blood on the walls if the weaponization by US lawmakers intensifies. Now, what seems to be the future of ASML? It is estimated that the production of prototype EUV machines, which are said to be pushing the boundaries of what is possible within the realm of physics, will cost somewhere in the neighborhood of $300 million. To say the least, the outlook for the future is unsettling. Due to the rising costs of production, the shrinking availability of specialized knowledge, and the surging demand in the market for advanced semiconductors. But EUV machines are the only way to print miniature designs on chips at the moment. And if Moore's law is proven to be accurate, then some people believe that the industry is similar to a racing car heading towards a brick wall at high speed. And for those who do not know, Moore's law is the theory that the number of transistors on microchips will double every two years. Under these circumstances, ASML is in an excellent position to become a potential savior or the world's ultimate villain, depending on how they measure up to the task at hand. What do you think? Does ASML's track record dictate that they'll be able to steer the ship back on course and greatly help turn around the global chip shortage? Or does a world placing too many eggs in one company's basket deserve to crash and burn? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comments. If you like this video, please consider giving it a like and subscribing so we can keep bringing you more content just like this. Until next time.